a look at a new tool that you will probably are going to use and love. Please welcome to our table <laughs> Philip Hodgetts from Intelligent Assistance and Gregory, Gregory Clark. Yeah. <clears throat> I, sh I should point out that Greg is actually the genius that writes all the software. I just give him reasons to learn new curse words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Lumberjack, which is what I'm going to be, we're going to be showing, is a real-time logging system for reality and documentary. Uh, narrative, people who've got scripts have got really simple logging. Scene, shot, take. It's a code to get you back to the script and it's very easy and relatively straightforward and there are quite a few tools that will allow you to log that in the field and transfer it back into the NLE. Not so much for uh, reality and documentary where you really are never sure what's going to happen uh, and, and, um, and where you're going to go. So for example, uh, back, in, uh, back in earlier in the year where I um, was working on Solar Odyssey, oh, gee, it's really hard working. I had a lot more keywords than what we're using here uh, today, but I pre-populated the interface with what I think is going to be useful for uh, the interview with Michael. And that's these, these. And we use a, we use a, 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 um, we use a sentence structure, really. Location, where, who's on camera, what are they doing, and you can further finally fine tune the activity down. So if it's something like uh, an interview answer or an argument, you can put further detail in as to what the argument is about. I'm going to come back to this interface in a little bit, but. Uh, right now, in order for us to uh, move forward, um, I might need the question, Michael. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's right. That's yours. <laughs> You'll notice that these cameras have no wires connecting them. To the <laughs> uh, okay, I'm recording. Completely, completely without wires, completely without time code generators. And without a net. And without a safety net. Right. So, are we ready? Yes. Okay, roll that camera, please. Dean, how's my hair? Camera's right. Okay. Wow. Mike. Okay. Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, what led you to start Lefsey Park originally? Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know who's never been here before, we started this uh, user group about 12 years ago. And the reason I started it was I was an actor for about 25 years prior to that and was making a good living but was really bored with it. And I didn't want to do it anymore. What I wanted to really do was direct, as they say. <laughs> no, seriously, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, uh, at the time that I'd made the decision, uh, without my wife knowing it, that I wanted to direct, uh, Final Cut Pro came out. It was about 1999, and I heard about it, and I heard it was $999. So you didn't have to buy an Avid for you know, a gazillion dollars. And I'm a controlling kind of person, and I wanted to edit my own movies. And so I got this application, and I started this user group primarily to surround myself with people who are smarter than me so they can help me learn this application. That's it. And then it just took off. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about those early days. Uh, the early days was all sort of internet. It was all virtual uh, uh, meetings with on, uh, at that time, Tupop.com. And uh, our first meeting was over in Burbank at the Video Symphony. It had like 30 people. And, uh, and, and this was the start of that digital revolution that everybody felt that was you know, it was exciting. It was uh, that they did this Final Cut Pro that all the pros hated but all the indies loved. They wanted to be a part of this whole thing. And, <coughs> and so <coughs> we outgrew that place the first month that we were there. And we moved over to uh, uh, Dr. Rothstock <coughs> in Hollywood and, uh, and outgrew that place. Then we moved to Moviola and outgrew that place. Then we finally moved to LA Film School. And uh, that was a 300 seat theater. And uh, then we were kicked out of there about four years later, and then we are here. We've been here for about seven years. And uh, um, uh, that whole idea of revolution is not necessarily there anymore, but that, that passion for storytelling that all of you have and that I still have is still there. And that's kind of what keeps this whole thing going. Sure. Well, what <clears throat> led to the super meets out of that initial user group? Yeah, the, the, the super meets uh, began as a, a, a group gathering of all these user groups from all over the world um, that we decided to, to, to sort of integrate ourselves. Uh, we started in San Francisco and we had, uh, and then we started, and then we went to Las Vegas for NAB and then we went to Amsterdam for IBC and then we've done some uh, standalone 
places in uh, um, Boston and uh, London and, uh, and hopefully other cities, Austin. Um, the whole idea of these super meets is the same thing as these user groups. It's just to get together, gather, learn yes. something that's on stage. But the most important thing is, is just to meet each other and to share with each other and to, to help each other. That's it. So why did you kick the F out of Lefsy Pug? And create it, to create the new Le Lessie Pug name. Yeah, a, a lot of people um, were surprised that we did that, but you shouldn't have been because we're at least five years going now or something like that. We have not not been so much a Final Cut Pro user group. Um, we've always shown Adobe stuff and Avid stuff and, and, and all the NLE stuff. Uh, in the, even the first year that we started back in 2000, we had a, uh, a meeting uh, that was, was all the NLEs, even including Vegas Pro. And I always say that we just sort of draw the line at uh, no PCs. And <laughs> but, uh, pretty much Mac-centric, because that's pretty much what we use. Um, but we, you know, we've been talking about dropping the F for years now. Uh, and it had nothing to do with Final Cut 10 coming out, it really didn't. Um, uh, as all of you know, I'm not a big fan of Apple, <laughs> but, but uh, I am somewhat of a fan of Final Cut 10, and uh, it's, it's moving forward, and I'm a fan of Final Cut 7, but I'm also a fan of all the NLEs, but we all know it's just a tool, and we don't really give a damn what tool you use, we just care about what you do with the tool, and that's it. And finally, what do you think the future of what do you think the future is for user groups? It's not easy. Uh, uh, keeping this thing going is, is not an easy thing because I, 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 you know, coming up with ideas for every month uh, to put up on stage, to, to teach you, to help you uh, is, is not easy. It's, it's, it's hard to get out of the house. It's really hard for creative people to get out of the house and come to situations like this. It's really hard because most of you are really uncomfortable. Uh, most creative people are uncomfortable meeting each other. Um, but it's really, really important. Uh, there, I can't stress enough uh, the networking that you need to do if you're serious about a career in Hollywood. Um, take advantage of these opportunities. Come to these things. You know, Create a different persona that's not you. That, uh, that, that you can use when you come to these kinds of events that give you the courage to go up to somebody and shake their hand and say, hi, I am. And because you never know, like, just like I said before a hundred times, you never know who's, who you're gonna meet who is gonna change your life. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and, well, I can't wait to see this. Going to swap over to Final Cut 10, uh, which is, well, we're currently working with this, largely because we developed this tool for, thank you, uh, for Solar Odyssey last year, and that was the decision that was already made to do Final Cut 10 uh, when we are doing that. So this is the ingest uh, dialogue for Final Cut 10, and I was going to pick up the last clip. Obviously, that's Michael. And take it into a new event. And now I'm just going to, well, that's ingesting. I'm just going to get the other angle. Now, normally, we would also have an audio angle, uh, an audio um, angle, I guess. Uh, I would have another audio source. Um, an H1 Zoom would be my choice because that's what we've been using, uh, giving great results. But it complicates the demo sufficiently that we're not going to, I didn't do that here. Um, but that certainly supports that. Now, what, we, what we're actually doing during the demo uh, on, the, on an iPad, but it works in a browser. So it's iPad friendly, it's browser friendly, it's Mac or PC friendly, it will work on Android. When we release it will work uh, with Final Cut 7 and with the Premiere workflow. And we're desperately trying to work a way of, of making it work with Media Composer, but it would help if they opened up a little. Uh, I, I get, hear occasional uh, little dropped words from people in that, uh, that area of the world that suggest that maybe they are working on something, but they're not prepared to talk about it yet. This is the logging interface. Uh, you have a choose a story up here. You can choose that. Uh, as I said, locations, people. Uh, that's because I was playing different characters in our demo, so every time I changed my shirt, I would change my name. <laughs> um, 
The activities, now as I said, during the Solar Odyssey we had a bunch more activities and a bunch more people um, towing, loading, pushing, tightening, tightening, fighting, swimming, etc, etc. Hmm? Lots of fighting, yes, lots of fighting. Uh, then within activities you have the option of, of content keywords. One of the things I learnt in doing this was there is a distinction between the context keywords, the where, who, what they're doing, and then the content of what it is, that, if it's an answer, we'd like some content about what the answer is about. Uh, you've also got the option of doing a comment, so you can type a comment in, or if you're connected uh, on a series supported device and connected to the internet, you can do that note by voice. We're building in uh, op op the ability to log a particular card rather than every, car every card. So if you wanted to have two people logging two different cards, that's possible as well. Two people can log the same event. Three people can log the same event. There are many ways of dealing with that. You can also rank it up, choose a ranking. So uh, you can say as we're going through, if there's a good part, you can say, well, that's three stars, that's low stars. Uh, and that just creates its own bin in Final Cut 10. Uh, and it'll trace of being in, in seven as well. I also discovered that I frequently would, something would happen on camera that I hadn't prepared for. Somebody new would come into the shot, somebody, some new activity would start. And it's no trouble to edit the activities and add a new activity. Um, but by the time you do that, the, the moment's already gone. So we built in the ability to say, well, add the new log word, but log it from 90 seconds ago or 120 seconds ago. Or if you realise that something has been happening and you've missed it, you can say, well, log that from about 60 seconds ago. Um, and that's pretty much the, the interface. It's incredibly complex. <laughs> um, so in Final Cut Pro 10, we've now got all of our two angles in ingested, 100%. And I'm just going to quickly make a multicam clip. And... Uh, And that's going to take about three seconds or four seconds. I'm making the multi-clip inside Final Cut 10 because I'm using the audio to make the multi-clip. Um, right, that's not supported in, um, otherwise. If we're, we do plan, if you have a matching time code on your clips and on your audio, then, then the Lumberjack app will build your multi-clips for you. So I'm just going to export XML. And I'm just going to throw that to the desktop. Go into the, again, incredibly complex Lumberjack interface and import that XML uh, and target the right event. Now, I also, we also built in the ability to work in time zones, the server being in the LA time zone. Most of our logging was done in Flores time zone, so we have to have the ability to offset for time zone. Uh, this is what makes it more interesting, this little checkbox here. For each person, create a select string out. I, in other words, only the bits that were interesting for each person or for each content keyword. Now, there's not much point doing content keywords because there'll be exactly one clip in every content keyword string out for one person. For the person, Michael Horton. And you can add, add a title. So merge and send that back to Final Cut Pro 10. There we go. There's our multi-clip with Michael's answers. That's the first answer. Start of Lashley Park, early growth. Super meets, broaden focus, answers. Already logged. That's got to be worth a clap, surely? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But we also have this, a string out of all of Michael's answers, but none of the questions, and every time we change a new answer, we cut to the other angle so that it flows a little bit more producer-friendly. Now, this is rough. I mean, you'll find that these edit points are approximate. You'll probably trim them a little bit either way. Um, but you'll get, you're in the ballpark. You haven't had to watch this material through. I mean, it was a six-minute interview by two cameras, so you, otherwise you'd have had to spend 12, 15 minutes logging this um, and putting it together. Uh, you notice we've got a little simple lower third here that transfers the name through. This is all very interesting if you've just got one... Um, one person in the interview, but if you've got a lot more material, then starting to use the string outs by keyword makes more sense. And so in this uh, version, the, uh, as I said, the incredibly virtual, versatile um, actor here has re recorded the same questions, the same answers, uh, multiple different times, and strung out each of the answers 
and each time the, the person appears on camera the first time, their name appears on camera. And so there's a string out of all the selects for that answer, ready to start trimming it up, making something of that little subsection of substory or, so, or topic within the story. And that pretty much is Lumberjack. It's real time on, on location logging for um, reality and documentary television. Yeah. Anything that can connect to a browser. So yes. It's very pokey on an iPhone. But it's very pokey on an iPhone. What you might be interested in though is that on an iPhone we, um, we're isolating out just the ranking section. So that if you're a producer and you're, you're surreptitiously going good, bad, good, bad and somebody else is doing the logging, uh, <clears throat> that was a, actually a suggestion from Rich Harrington that we thought was good enough to implement. It was challenging. Any other questions before we have to go to the break? <laughs> and speaking of the break, by the way, this is for those of you who've never been here.